Hey guys, I'm Simon and welcome back to the channel. First of all, I have a quick announcement to make concerning the channel. I did not upload a video last week and from now on I will continue to upload every two weeks instead of every single Monday. Right now, luckily, normal life is coming back, which in my case already led to, you know, me not having enough time anymore to do a video every week. So I'll hit you up with a new video every second Monday. Today we are in a for you new and unfamiliar environment. Welcome to my home. We are here because today we are talking about a very important topic for all of us musicians, apartment practicing. I already did quite a long practice pad comparison video here on my channel. Be sure to check that out if you haven't already. Of course, I put the link in the description box. And today we're talking about this guy back in the corner here, my low volume mesh head home practice drum kit, which is a thing that became quite popular over the last couple of years because they finally came up with special heads and special cymbals to put on your normal acoustic drum set in order to quiet it down. Here I'm using the Remo Silent Stroke Mesh drum heads and the Silgen L80 low volume cymbals. Of course I'm a Peisty guy, but you know, Peisty does not make any low volume cymbals yet, so I'm using those. And both the cymbals and the drum heads promise to give you 80% less volume. Is that true? That's what we're going to find out today amongst various different other things. Stay tuned. Today's playing demos are all iPhone audio because, you know, why mic up this kit when the iPhone audio gives you a more realistic and relatable experience anyways. As you can hear in the iPhone video examples, the volume is drastically reduced. So I think this really gives you a nice alternative uh, to your existing apartment practice tools which would be practice pads and electronic drum kits. You might have, you know, some second drum kit standing around somewhere in the corner that you don't really use anymore. And if you don't have a spare drum kit, you can normally find something used for only a hundred bucks or something. So this gives you actually quite a cheap practice alternative to an electronic drum kit. Of course, you can buy e-drums for 250 euros, but you know, we all know what those are. Those Remo Silent Stroke heads, they don't cost more than normal drum heads. So you just need, you know, one set of heads. And also the Silgen L80 low volume cymbals. There are cheaper ones out there now, you know, by other companies, but even the Silgen ones, they are not that expensive. Of course, it is a lot of money, but it is of course much less that you would spend on an actual, you know, set of Silgen cymbals. So all together for a couple of hundred bucks, you can really create a nice practice solution for your home. So yeah, the kit is still not super quiet, of course, but you can hear me talking over this, which actually says a lot. This is another talking example. Talking kind of loud now. Normal volume would be like like this. This is how I would normally talk. I guess you can still hear me all right. The playing feel, they nail it. That the symbols are pretty dope, but then again, they are real symbols with a million holes in them and with you know. I think a quieter material and a special, you know, sandblasted finish or something. But it, it is still a symbol and it feels like a symbol. The hi-hats, they feel like hi-hats. 
you know, it's, it's really great to play on them. They are a, a, a bit light, you know, when you lean into the hi-hats, you, you realize that they are a bit lighter, but that's what makes it quieter. So um, they have to do that. Um, but, you know, feel-wise, I think those low volume symbols are the best product out there that feels closest to an actual symbol, because again, it is an actual symbol. The heads, the Remo Silent Stroke heads, yeah, they, they feel nice, they, they feel great, but they give you much more rebound than an actual drum head. That's always kind of the, the, the problem with those mesh heads, because they always give you this trampoline effect, kind of. So they have more rebound than actual Remo Ambassador heads. It's more, but it's not, you know, it's, it's not ridiculously more. But the whole kit certainly feels a bit weird in the beginning, but it feels kind of nice at the same time, and, and you get used to it. And now the sound part, you no, know, the overall sound is okay. The symbols, um, they actually have a nice tone. They actually sound like normal symbols, but then again, they give you much more attack than a normal symbol because the symbol is so much quieter, but if you're still hitting it with a normal drumstick, you suddenly hear so much more stick sound that you normally don't really hear that much when you hit an actual symbol because then the symbol is loud and you don't hear the stick. Now you're suddenly hearing the stick. You're hearing a very clear, attacky, wooden tone when riding and crashing those cymbals because you hear the stick, you hear the piece of wood hitting a hard surface. But then again, if you would use other sticks like hot rods, I tried hot rods once and, and, and that got rid of the problem completely, but then of course you're playing with rods and not with sticks anymore. They're not bad sounding. Actually for what they are, they are very good sounding cymbals. And then the rest of the kit, I mean kick drum, as you can see right now, it's completely stuffed. This is something I would of course never, never ever do on my acoustic bass drums. But here this works really great because you get a really nice, punchy, um, clear and definite bass drum sound without too much low end rumbling on all the time. And then the tom sound, the best, I have to say. You don't really hear a tone from the better heads, but you can still create a nice tone with your Rezo heads that are still, you know, vibrating. So the toms really work the best, I would say. The snare drum maybe sounds the worst, because you, no matter how tight you dial in your snare wires, you will never get a clear, crisp, you know, funky, crispy uh, snare sound. It will always sound kind of mushy and, and, and weird. So, and now the most important part of this video, noise reduction. I mean, does it work? I would say it gives you exactly what it promises, meaning it really reduces the whole drum kit volume by 80%. But keep in mind that 20% of an acoustic drum kit, if you're playing loud, if you're not just playing quiet stuff, but if you're, you know, hitting it, 20% is still audible, not only in your apartment, but also in the apartments around you. There are ways to reduce the sound. For example, um, one thing that I noticed right away, I think I was playing like the first rim shot on the snare drum. You suddenly realize how loud that rim by itself is because you're hitting wood on metal. But of course you can do something about that. I bought this, you know, rubber sleeve by a British company called Shaw Percussion. And that thing, you know, you just stick it on your snare drum rim. And then dampening, you know, the best thing to dampen this kit down a little bit is, you know, by putting some stuff inside the drums. You can also put stuff inside the snare drum and also inside the toms. If you put an actual piece of tape or something on those better heads, in my experience, um, those heads suddenly become louder again. Uh, which is really weird because normally by muffling you're reducing the overtones and the sound gets quieter But here you're adding mass to those, you know, mesh heads and suddenly in a way they sound louder to me uh, When you when you stick something on there, maybe that's just my impression But I also made this impression with the symbols and you know, if you put a piece of tape on the symbol um, those low volume symbols become louder. I don't know if that scientifically makes any sense at all but that's at least what I experienced. The actual best way to really reduce uh, the volume even more 
is by just, you know, getting rid of those reso heads. You can do this on the bass drum and, you know, on the toms, the mesh head alone just doesn't sound like much at all. You can also do this on the snare drum. I tried to do that, but then you don't have snare drum sound anymore because you need the reso head and the snare wires to give you any kind of snare drum sound. But if you were using triggers or something, or if you, you know, don't care about the sound at all, you just want it to be as quiet as possible, get rid of those reso heads. But let's address the elephant in the room now, which is always, you know, the kill and, and you know, the death sentence in home practicing. In German, we call it Trittschall. Trittschall which would be, you know, those low frequencies transmitted by the floor, which come from the instruments themselves, but mainly from, you know, your activity of just, you know, stomping on the floor all the time. And that sound alone, you know, your foot stomping sound is, of course, not reduced. You're still, you know, hitting the floor with your legs. And that's where the problems just come in, you know. We've all experienced that, you know, with electronic kits, and here is, it's, it's just the same. And if you're living in a normal apartment and not, you know, a super isolated and perfectly built apartment with very good floor isolation, your downstairs neighbors will hear you. And with this kit, they will actually hear a lot. And I think that, you know, your downstairs neighbors, but also the neighbors around you will actually hear much more volume from this than from an electronic kit. Because, you know, the foot stomping kind of stays the same. But um, the drums, especially if you use reso heads, and also the cymbals are louder than electronic drums. And they are also, you know, bigger drums. If you're not using one of those, you know, electronic acoustic drum kits, but you know, a normal uh, uh, electronic drum kit, you have much smaller drums and, and much smaller shells and much less mass is stimulated. Here you're playing a normal drum kit that is much quieter, but it is a normal kit and it, it still resonates and, and behaves like a normal drum kit. So I'm not an expert in electronic drums, but I believe that they will still be quieter and that they will still be, you know, more apartment and neighbor friendly than this solution right here. Until last year, I was living in a different apartment, different house, and I did not have any downstairs neighbors. And also, you know, it was an older building with thicker walls. So I think the neighbors around me didn't hear that much as well. Um, and there I never got any complaints with the kit. Then I moved into this apartment and I think it was like maybe the, the, the second or third day of using it when my downstairs neighbors suddenly rang the doorbell. So then we worked out this kind of schedule and that's my number one advice anyway. Try that stuff out until you get any complaints and then find a schedule with those neighbors who complain and try to use it only when they're not home. And another great solution to get rid of those low floor frequencies, the Trittschall, is a, um, you know, frequency absorbing drum riser. You can buy those, there are companies that actually produce those, or you can build one by yourself. And you know, the number one solution here on the internet seems to be a tennis ball riser. There are like 15 or 20 videos on YouTube already on how to build tennis ball risers. I probably watched them all and I built one just the other week. In fact, today was my first day of practicing with the tennis ball riser. So I don't have that much to report yet. I don't know if my downstairs neighbors really hear, you know, much less now. But you know, if you want to believe on, on what the internet says is that this really is a great solution to the problem. You'll never get rid of any noise 100%. It's just never happening. So I'm sure that they still hear me. But the question is, is it still unbearable? Because I hear all my neighbors too, basically all the time. And there are other musicians in my house practicing their instruments as well. But that's on a normal bearable level, you know, without, you know, somebody stomping on your head and, and having the feeling that the ceiling comes down, which sadly is what we produce as drummers. So the sound can, of course, still be heard, but I think it's really much quieter and also, you know, less vibrating, you know? There's not only the sound, there's also the vibrations. You know, when I used this kit before without the tennis ball riser, sometimes it was kind of like an, a little earthquake. I had the feeling that, you know, the furniture started moving. And that's the first thing that you really have to get rid of when you don't want to piss off your neighbors. My girlfriend went around the apartment experiencing much less frequencies than without the riser.
and I also let her play the drums and went into the kitchen, which is the next room here, and I couldn't even hear her play over the sound of the dishwasher anymore. Having this kind of riser is the best thing that you can do. I ordered an electronic drum kit the other day that will be here soon and then I can maybe do another video and you know share my thoughts about if the situation has improved with the tennis ball riser and then the new kit or if it basically winds up being the same compared to the low volume kit. That having said let me also inform you that this beautiful low volume kit is now up for sale. So if you are looking into a low volume practice solution for your home and if you're looking for a complete kit already with the Remo Silent Stroke drum heads and the Silgen L80 and all the hardware I would be happy to sell this kit to you. Hit me up. And again, if you're living in an apartment with very thick walls and very nice neighbors, you won't encounter any problems. And if you do have problems with the downstairs neighbors, a thing like the tennis ball riser should really solve your problems. I really want to know what's your situation and your experiences concerning apartment practicing. I'm always on the lookout for new stuff and new solutions. So please leave some comments. I'm very excited to hear your stories. That's it for this week. Again, I will hit you up with a completely new video in two weeks. Until then, please make sure to subscribe to my channel right here. If you're interested in learning hand technique with me, I have a completely 17 episode free course right here on YouTube. Please check it out. Check out all the other stuff as well as usual and I'll see you again soon.